Yes, we all have these on our faces, the secret lives of mites in the skin of our faces. This is by University of Reading on phys.org. It's not only that we have them on our eyelashes, they come every night and uh, they come out every night and uh, have relations with each other. <laughs> That's why we get dry eye syndrome sometimes. And uh, most of us have them. Um, and we also have these face mites, image of the Demodox follicolurium mite or skin uh, on, on the skin under uh, Herox microscope. Microscopic mites that live in human pores and mate on our face at night are becoming such simplified organisms due to their unusual lifestyles that they may soon become one of the humans. They become one with humans, new research has found. The mites are passed on during birth and are carried by almost every human with numbers peaking in adults as the pores grow bigger. They measure around 0.3 millimeters long, are found in the hair follicles on the face and the nipples, including the eyelashes, and eat the sebum naturally released by cells in the pores. They become active at night and move between follicles looking to mate. The very first genome sequence study of the D. follicolorum might found that their isolated existence and resulting inbreeding is causing them to shed unnecessary genes and cells and move towards a transition from external parasites to internal symbionts. Dr. Alessandra Perotti, Associate Professor in Invertebrate Biology at the University of Reading, uh, just about an hour's fast train ride from uh, west of London, who co-led the research said, we found these mites have a different arrangement of body parts, genes to other uh, part genes to other similar species due to them adapting to the sheltered life inside pores. These changes to their DNA have resulted in some unusual body features and behaviors. The in-depth study of the Demodox follicolorum DNA reveals, due to their isolated existence with no exposure to external threats, no competition to infest hosts, and no encounters with other mites with different genes, genetic reduction has caused them to become extremely simple organisms with tiny legs powered by just three single cell muscles. They survive with a minimum repertoire of proteins, the lowest number ever seen in this and relative, related species. This gene reduction is the reason for their nocturnal behavior too. The mites lack UV protection and have lost the gene that causes animals to be awakened by daylight. They also have been left unable to produce melatonin, a compound that makes small invertebrates active at night. However, they are able to fuel their all-night mating sessions during the melatonin secreted by human skin at dusk. Their unique gene arrangement also results in the mites' unusual mating habits. Their reproductive organs have moved anteriorly, and males have a penis that produces that protrudes upwards from the front of their body, meaning that they have a position, they have to position themselves underneath the female when mating and copulate as they both cling onto the human hair. Isn't that exciting? What goes on on our faces every night? Now, look, they don't say anything about other parts of, the, of our body. They, they, they only talk about what goes on on our face and our eyelashes, right? And as I'm reading this, I'm wondering what goes on on every other part of our body. Do we have other mites that do the similar, similar things there? Now, one of their genes has inverted, giving them a particular arrangement of mouth appendages that are especially protruding for gathering food. This aids their survival at a young age. The mites have more, many more cells than a young age compared to their adult stage. This counters the previous assumption that parasitic animals reduce their cell numbers early in development. The researchers argue that this is the first step towards the mites becoming Symbionts. The lack of exposure to potential mates that could add new genes to their offspring may have set the mites on course for an evolutionary dead end and potential extinction. This has been observed in bacteria living inside cells before, but never on in an animal. Some researchers had assumed the mites do not have an anus 
and therefore must accumulate all their feces through their lifetime before releasing it when they die, causing skin inflammation. The new study, however, confirms they do have anuses and so had been unfairly blamed for many skin conditions. Their research was led by Bangor University, the University of Reading, in collaboration with the University of Valencia, University of Vienna, and National University of San Juan, and is published in the journal Molecular Biology and Evolution. Dr. Hen Brang, co-lead co author of Bangor University and National University of San Juan, said, mites have been blamed for a lot of things. The long association with humans might suggest that they also could have simple but important beneficial roles, for example, in keeping the pores in our face unplugged. Well, that's great, but where does their uh, where does their where do their feces go to? Okay, <laughs> ah, this is ridiculous. Where do their feces go to? Obviously, on our face. Isn't that something? Okay, so this is on face. This is terrible, but uh, you know. Okay, uh, this is terrible. <laughs> okay, please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.